Once we have the loss function as a criteria to determine how good your performance is, how to determine the overall design performance of your design. Here we use the average loss to be the measure of quality. For example, like the nominal the best, we understand this quadratic function L of y, which is k multiplied by y minus m, could be the loss function. Say you want to understand how good your design is, you can use samples. For example, you take n samples of your batch. You want to estimate how good your performance is. You can substitute the performance of each instance into the equation, sum them up and take the average. Now we can use some mathematical transformation to better understand the features of this average quality loss of nominal the best problem. Say we can minus y bar and plus y bar, and where y bar is the average output of these n samples. So using some simple manipulation of the equation and some uh, concept of the statistics, you can end up a equation like here, where the average loss for nominal the best problem can be equal to k, which is the quality coefficient and s is the standard deviation of your sample, n is the number of sample, y bar is the average output, m is the target. If you have a lot of samples, which means if n is large, n minus 1 over n will be very close to 1, then you can neglect that and make average quality loss to be the summation of two terms, s squared plus y bar minus m squared. So the average quality loss can be stand for k multiplied by mean square deviation. What is mean square deviation? Which is the deviation of the output from the target m. Although k can be obtained by connecting the previous quality control criteria and to get what is the coefficient k, but k is only a constant. So if we want to determine which design is better, so we can neglect this constant and by simply look at the mean square deviation MSD. If you look at the MSD, you can understand they are two parts. For example, this is your target. This blue line is your output. If you look at the average quality loss, the first part of the average quality loss is associated with the difference of the mean to the target, y bar minus m. And the second part of the average quality loss is associated with s squared, which is related to your distribution quality. If your standard deviation is big, which means your distribution is in a wider range, and the quality loss will be larger. So the average quality loss can be stands for these two parts. By using this average quality loss, you can differentiate which design will be better. For example, if you compare the blue distribution and the red distribution, they are distribution of two different design. Say you want to compare which one is better. By calculating the average quality loss, you can understand for these two design, if they all center at the same place, y bar. Then the first part loss will be the same for blue and red designs. However, for the red design, it got a larger standard deviation. And so that's the reason why it got a flatter uh, design. And as you can see, S square will be larger for this red design. The loss associated with the standard deviation will be larger as well. Therefore, the blue design will be better than the red design. If you want to compare the blue and the green design, you can use a similar criteria. Assume these two designs has the same standard deviation. So you can see the distribution looks very similar. However, they center at the different places. If the average of the blue design is closer to the target compared with the green design, using the average quality loss, you can see the loss associated with the first part the blue design is better than the green design. But if you want to compare the green design and the red design, for example like this one and that one, 
and it's not that obvious. However, you can use the average quality loss to determine which design is better. For a smaller the better case, the loss function is equal to k multiplied by y squared. And most of the time, uh, this uh, type of quality, the output will be a positive number. And we want the output to be as small as possible. Or you can assume this is very similar. You have the target zero. And you want to make your output to as close to zero as possible. So the average quality loss is very similar to the previous nominal the best case. And you can use the similar calculation to understand this average quality loss for smaller the better can be represented by two parts. And the first part is associated with the mean output, and the second part is associated with the distribution of your design. If you only look at the mean square deviation for smaller the better case, if you have a smaller output, which means the loss will be smaller. And also, if you have a smaller deviation, which means that your distribution is more concentrated, then the second loss will be smaller as well. The third part is larger the better. And this is their loss function. So by look at this loss function, you can see if the performance is larger, then the loss will become smaller. And what is the average loss for this type of problems? If you take n samples, and this is the average loss. In order to understand the meaning for average quality loss of the larger the better case, we can take the Taylor series. And this is the expansion of a Taylor series up to order 4. In most of the case, we will neglect higher order and use only the first two turns to represent the average quality loss for larger the better case. Therefore, the mean square deviation for larger the better can be simplified into this equation. This is larger the better, so you would like the average output to be as large as possible. But based on the quality concern, you would like the standard deviation to be as small as possible. By using this average loss, you can see if you have a large output and a smaller standard deviation, you will have a smaller mean square deviation, which means a smaller average quality loss. In summary, I put these three average quality loss over here. Because in robust design, we consider not only the average output, which could be larger the better, smaller the better, or nominal the best, but also the conformance, which can be represented by the standard deviation. We want the standard deviation of your performance to be as small as possible. By using this average quality loss over here, you can understand this is a very suitable criteria to determine a design quality. Because based on the nominal of the best, by using this criteria, you can get a design closer to the target and also a smaller standard deviation. You can compare the smaller the better and larger the better case. By using this average quality loss, you can achieve your performance goal. Whether it is nominal, smaller, or larger the better, but at the same time, you can optimize the conformance by minimizing the standard deviation. So the next step is using this criteria to determine the best parameter combination of your designs. And here, because the system is not usually given, we should use design to determine the relationship between input and output, especially the control factors. What is the inference of each control factors? But at the same time, when we find the parameter combinations, we want to reduce the sensitivity to these noise factors. By using this criteria, which can be either mean square deviation or the average quality loss, we can obtain a design with optimum performance goal, but also we can minimize the performance deviations. Therefore, in robust design, we can use the average quality loss or mean square deviation as a criteria to determine which parameter design can deliver a design with smaller mean square deviation. And this is called a quality design. The design objective of robust design is try to use experimental method to find out the relation between input and output. 
and come up the parameter combination, they can give us a quality output, which can satisfy our performance requirement and also the conformance requirement. By using these average quality laws, it can fulfill our requirement for these two criteria. So the next step is the selection of the parameters using design of experiment and some statistical techniques. Try to determine which parameter combination will give us the lowest average quality loss. And this will be the robust design we would like to obtain.